I, I wonder at that time is is when he coins this phrase in three verse sixteen. I did even uh, I did even as the Lord had commanded me, and I did stand as an idle witness. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's having to stand back on the sidelines and watch the the carnage occur. How how difficult that would be, because we know prophets are all, usually always proactive, mm -hmm. and now nothing. You know, I, I find it's interesting as you look at all this death and carnage and the difficult circumstances and him knowing what he does know concerning uh, his own people, um, why he includes the detail that he does about that. Uh, and then when you look at chapter uh, 3, verse um, 18, he, he, at 17, he tells us, he says, Therefore I write unto you Gentiles and also unto you, house of Israel, um, so he recognizes, even though uh, his people in his day, uh, that there's going to come an end, that this it's, it's now witness as to what happens to those who are wicked and a hope to, ca to allow others in the future to repent. Well, I, 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 I love the point you just brought up. To me, it's summarized as well in chapter 5, verse 12, when he says, these things are written because it is known of God that wickedness will not bring them forth. In other words, the wicked won't tell you what wickedness does to you. And he wants people to understand what the results of wickedness are. And he wants both the Gentiles and the covenant people of Israel to understand. Because wickedness won't bring forth wickedness. It won't tell the story of wickedness. And the result of all that wickedness and the result is of it. every individual in verse 20 of chapter 3 I write unto you that ye may know that ye must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, yes. every soul. And so regardless of who we are, there will come a day where we'll stand before God. We have sort of a dichotomy that's almost set up. Some see Mormon as, a, as somebody that's immersed in war, and hence he's included all these war details in the Book of Mormon from kind of a natural standpoint and inclination. And then on the other hand, you have this prophet whose role is to direct people to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, as he points out, and as he's commissioned to stand at this point in this history and, and, and see all these wars and be even a part of them until the Lord withdraws him from them, then he steps back and he says, now the real reason why I'm telling you all this is to, be, to persuade you to come unto Christ. And so those chapters 4 and 5, you just see uh, such poignant kinds of pleadings, uh, just like you started with, David, there. I write, all, I write to all of you in verse 3 that you might know that you're going to stand before this uh, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, There's an interesting doctrinal point, too, that's brought to light in chapter 3, verses 18 to 19, about the judgment. Uh, every human being will be judged, but we come to learn from Mormon that that the Savior delegates an judgment. order or authority for judgment to the twelve tribes and that the that the covenant people on this continent will be judged of the twelve that Jesus chose during his post-resurrection ministry and that they in turn will be judged by the twelve original twelve of uh, Israel so that there is a what a delegation of judgment if you will even though Jesus is called the great judge in, in the New Testament he still delegates judgment to others. Uh, the scene of destruction here towards the tail end of, of Mormon's writings. Uh, my wife frequently tells me this might be my least favorite chapters because she just, uh, her comment is it, it, to just even think about man's inhumanity to man at this point of the, of the history of these peoples. Uh, there never had been so great wickedness there. Uh, chapter 4 and verse 12, it's impossible for the tongue to describe he just almost doesn't even want to go there and tell you how bad it is. Uh, uh, what about chapter 5 there? He, he says, I was without hope for my people ever turning the corner. But then he just kind of, he kind of lays out his pleadings and his testimony about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what, what things do you find there that are real significant? Well, he does pick up on the point that you made in verse 8 of chapter 5. Uh, I, Mormon, do not desire to harrow up the souls of men and casting before them such an awful scene of blood and carnage but he says I'm telling you this so that you can learn the powerful lessons that you need to learn to avoid the mistakes that my people have made the traps that they've fallen into and and of course that means to avoid them 
we must embrace the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, which his people did not do. You know, there's a great lesson to learn, too, just piggybacking on what you've just said in verse 8, that there are those who are wicked who seem to believe that what they're doing no one will ever find out about. And he's so clear to point out at the very end of that verse, the things which are hid must be revealed upon the housetops, that all people will know. Um, so we truly do need to watch what we do. If it's nothing for no other reason, then it will be revealed. Yeah, that word must is interesting, yeah. isn't it? Must be. Uh, verse uh, 17 and 18, he, he, it's a, kind of a negative uh, comment, but it really can be taken positively. Uh, they were once a delightsome people. They had Christ for their shepherd. Yea, they were led even by God the Father. But now, behold, they are led about by Satan. Even as chaff is driven before the wind, or as a vessel is tossed uh, about upon the waves, without sail or anchor, or without anything wherewith to stir her. And even as she is, so are they. And how important it is to have Christ as our anchor as we uh, uh, continue on through mortality. And he's saying that was their problem. And in verse 14, it kind of goes along with what you're saying. It seems to summarize the intent of the Book of Mormon, that it's written for the purpose of convincing Jew and Gentile that Jesus is the Christ. And he, he says that nicely, I think, in verse 14 of chapter 5. Sounds five. a lot like the title page yeah, coming right here towards the conclusion. Gee, imagine that. <laughs> you know, not only that, but now you see with the loss of his own people, the Nephites, how he reaches out towards the descendants of his brothers, the Lamanites. In chapter 5, verse uh, 21, um, I love that passage where he says, Also the Lord will remember the prayers of the righteous. You remember way back earlier in the Book of Mormon with Enos, where he's offering his prayers that the Lamanites in some future day might come to know. Yeah. And indeed, that's exactly what Mormon wants to see happen in fulfillment of those prayers. And I love verse 23. It, it probably doesn't bring great comfort to the wicked, but it surely ought to bring com great comfort to the righteous. Know ye not that ye are in the hands of God? Know ye not that he hath all power, and that his great command, the earth shall be rolled together as the scroll? Uh, I think this is, uh, this is one of those things that cuts very, very sharply both ways. If you're righteous, what a great comfort it is to know that. If you're wicked, eh, not so much. Not so much. You know, in, in a real sense, it's that God's in charge. You know, Thank you. Yeah, that sounds things. great. Stan, wrap it up for us in a couple words. Well, I, I think... Uh, this is a book that I think we can both love and sometimes not uh, so much appreciate because of uh, the uh, the budget and all that goes forth. Uh, we've got a young man here who is powerful. He's uh, been visited of the Lord. He lives in a time when people really don't care. And uh, I just, I think the last chapter of... Uh, he talks about ye fair sons and daughters, you fathers and mothers, you husbands and wives, you fair ones. Maybe there's a message there as family members, as parents, uh, they blew it. I've often wondered if there isn't a message there that maybe the family is where they should have looked and centered their lives in Christ. Well said. Thanks.